Good morning, church family. This is Pastor Navarrete, and I just want you to know that I'm praying for you today. Thank you for tuning in again. It's Friday, the last Friday of January, and uh, we are preparing uh, our hearts and praying for revival. Uh, I'm hanging out down here. Today I'm in um, my corner. This is uh, my uh, gym, exercise area, uh, and study area in the house, and uh, it's good to let you into this space. Um, I want us to talk today about prayer. Um, I've been thinking so much just about the topic, spending time with the Lord. James 5, verse 16 and 17 says, Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And then that powerful phrase, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions such as we are. And he prayed earnestly that I might not reign, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. What an amazing man Elijah was. Yeah, he comes on the scene, and uh, by the time we know him, he's an adult. We don't know a lot about his young life. Uh, but he comes on the scene at a very dark time. Uh, the king of Israel is a wicked man, Ahab, and his wife Jezebel. They've done away with the priests of God and the things of God. They uh, hate, um, if you will, uh, Elijah. And um, Elijah, though, the Bible says, was just a really common guy, except one thing. He knew how to pray. And his prayer life changed the course. It kept uh, Israel from plunging into complete and total judgment and destruction. And that is uh, noteworthy. Um, the Bible tells us that he was a man of prayer. I wonder if you have a burden to pray. I sometimes ask myself, why is it that more people don't want to be as powerful as people like Elijah who knew how to pray? You know, Elijah made things happen wherever he was. God directed him. Um, for example, uh, there was a time the Bible says when he prayed and it didn't rain for three and a half years. Then he prayed again. It did rain for three and a half years. The Bible says that there was a time when God directed him to go to a widow and to stay with her and lodge there with her. And he ordered her to make him a meal. And then God provided for all of her meals uh, until the famine was over. Uh, there was another time when the Bible says that he um, went to Mount Carmel. You may remember that story. And all the prophets of Baal were on one side, and there was the altar, and of course, the altar of God he ordered to have doused with water. And the scriptures tell us that he prayed a simple prayer. In fact, I want you to listen to this prayer. First Kings 18, 37 says, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. He prayed a simple prayer, and God sent fire from heaven. I think it was Ian Bounds who said, Short, powerful public prayers result from long, secret intercession. The reason he didn't need to pray long is because he was so connected to God. You know, today in the church, we have a lot of players, but few prayers. A lot of organizers, but few agonizers. A lot of people who are willing to share their fears, but few people who are willing to wrestle with God in prayer. I read about the revivals and I think, Lord, why... Why is it that people don't just pray, imitate great prayer warriors? Why don't we want to be like Elijah, for example, who God saw, uh, who saw God uh, touch things and change things because he learned to pray? And it brings us today to my challenge to you, which is, would you stop and just spend some time in prayer right now? Would you spend some time today in prayer? Perhaps what you need to do is just schedule that. When will you do it? Will you pray for your greatest needs? Think of what they are. I've been praying this morning about the needs in our community um, of souls that need to be saved, of people that have been saved that need to be baptized. Uh, friends, we have dozens of people who are coming to our church right now who aren't converted. They're going to a Christless eternity. Will you pray for your pastor? 
C.H. Spurgeon was asked one time, what's the secret to your ministry? And without hesitation, he said, my people pray for me. I covet your prayers. I want to preach the gospel. I was praying for hurting people. Uh, people like Michelle Mickelson, who lost her, uh, her husband this past week. And he's in heaven, but um, she's hurting. Uh, and there's others. I think, uh, for example, of just um, people who need to be uh, just revived. I've been praying for our church family. I am praying that we'll become praying people, that we'll have a desire to intercede, to bring things before the Lord uh, with a sincere, a fervency, the Bible calls it. It availeth much. Uh, I have been praying this morning for our auditorium remodel. What a great need that is to create space so that we can uh, include others and train others in the Word of God see them grow with us uh, what a great thing that's gonna be but you know like everything um, we've got to pray I'm praying for example that the chairs will get here before Easter uh, the company's telling us it's probably not gonna happen well I believe God is able and I wish you'd pray with me about that I am praying the Lord will provide the funds so we can finish the project and pay for it totally cash I'm praying for um, workers people that will help us to do some of the carpentry model and plumbing so much to, to pray to God for. Uh, we have needs in our country. Uh, we have mass shootings. We have the politicizing of everything, it seems. And we as God's people have this responsibility to pray. Will you stop and pray today? What about your needs? What about your burdens? What about the people in your life who you'd love to see saved and their hearts touched? There's nothing that's impossible with God. Let's spend time in prayer today. Let's be like Elijah. Let's imitate this great man of God. God bless you today as you serve him.